What's up everyone, it's Eric, and I'm back with part two of the 140 Revival. So today is Saturday, March 9th. Um, I put the first video out of the 140 Revival on March 2nd, so we're about a week from that. And today, um, we're going to go ahead and I got some fresh skins on the wheels, and we're going to put them on and roll this thing outside. I'm actually going to take the wheels back off once we get it out. And I'm going to pressure wash this thing, get all this grime and just caked up grease and stuff off of here. So it'll be a little easier to do what we got to do as far as finishing this thing up and giving it back to the customer. So I'm going to just go over a few things we're going to address on this tractor before we bring it back to the customer. Uh, obviously, I stated we're going to get all this grime and stuff off of here. Uh, we're also going to replace the steering wheel. Um, as you, I don't know if you can tell if I stand back here, it is not round it, this tractor i was told flipped over at one time and with it being flipped over the breather inlet tube was all buckled so we were going to cut this one off and weld a new one on um back here on the gauge panel we're going to put a new ammeter we have a new key switch for it and i'm gonna see if the headlights work Also gonna, we're gonna pop off this uh, radiator and fix this fan shroud. I'm um, gonna weld it back together, or try to at least. As you can see, it's a little wonky and held on with some wire. And pulling this off will give us better access to the water pump, popping this water neck off, putting a new fan belt on. And I also need to get the, 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 the elbow out from down there and fix the uh, drain. After we get a pressure wash, we'll go ahead and bring this thing back inside. We're going to set the motor to top dead center. Again, we will pop the distributor out. I just find it easier to set the points and stuff in there out of the tractor. You can set it in a vise. Makes it a little easier. Uh, we'll then drop the oil in the motor, fresh oil, new filter. We'll also drop the transmission fluid and swap that out i have not looked in here yet so i do not know what it looks like um but if anybody knows that works on these things if you leave these things outside too long rain water will run down the shifter here and leak through the the shifter boot here and fill up the transmission with water and we'll also go ahead and change the final we'll, we'll top off the final dry fluid i already checked it it's not bad doesn't have any water or anything in it so i'm just going to top it off and it should be good to go and we will get this thing ready to go back to the customer. So the other day I took the rear wheels to get new tires and tubes put on them. Uh, I'll show you a clip here. Now y'all don't laugh at me too hard while I try to get these off here by myself. But right now, getting set up to pressure wash, so I'm going to set y'all back up on the tripod and get to work. Well, I don't know how well y'all could see, but I'm um, finally finished pressure washing. I did probably about four, I'm going to call cycles. I'd spray the degreaser, pressure wash, spray the degreaser, pressure wash, spray the degreaser, pressure wash, so on and so forth. And I ended up taking the seat off. The brackets were messed up. I'll show you here in a second uh, what I'm talking about. So this, uh, this is considered a deluxe 
seat for a international harvester um that came on different tractors cubs super a's you know 140s what have you um this one where it where it locks in is broke off so i went to a buddy's house and got a one that isn't broke off so you can see right here where that that uh where it locks in on the rail so i'm a I'm gonna oil these down, free them up, and I'm gonna get them swapped out on this uh, seat pan here. So this is the actual first drive of this tractor under its own power. There we go. So I'm going to go ahead and pop this carburetor off again so we can get it ready to go in the parts washer. Just got these two half inch bolt uh, nuts to get off. And you got to kind of loosen these and drop the carburetor down a little bit and then loosen them some more. There we go. Carburetor removed. So this here is a Schomber carburetor. Um, the 140s came with a bunch of different brands. Um, this one's a Schomber. As you can see, it's pretty, pretty funky. So we're gonna get it taken apart and we'll get all this heavy grease off first and then we're gonna stick it in the, the ultrasonic cleaner and really give it a good cleaning. Stuff. 
four, four flathead screws around the perimeter that hold this thing together. All right, so we'll go ahead and pull this emulsion tube out. It's a 3 8 socket. We'll get it out. There we go. There's a little washer in there. If I get it to come out, it's stuck in the bottom. There we go. Pull this guy out to just drain up the bottom. So that's everything we can take off of here. So put this aside. Go ahead and pull this uh, seat where the needle goes. So I like to use a bottom side of a uh, reciprocating saw blade because it fits in here nicely. And you can get some leverage on it and pops it off real easy. Just be careful not to cut yourself. Be smart. Carburetor is actually fairly clean, but we're gonna give it the once over. Let's see if we get this guy out. Screwdriver is too big. Get a smaller screwdriver here. Let's see if this jet will come out. If these jets don't want to come out, just be very gentle, you know. Like this one is getting hung up on something, so. Lube to help it come out. Hopefully it makes its way down and then. Yep, look at that, boom. Coming right on out. So this is probably just a little pilot jet, or main jet. I'm going to say pilot jet. Because it's small. Okie dokie. That's about all we could take off of there. So we're going to let the let the ultrasonic cleaner warm up. And I'm going to get to work on something else. Alright, so this here is an ultrasonic cleaner. It takes hot water and I guess ultrasonic pulses and cleans part so I'm gonna get some water in here more. there we go I'm gonna add some simple green to this mixture here there we go I'm just gonna drop the carburetor parts in here.
All right, that's everything. Oh, one more thing. All right, I'm gonna let this go for about 10 minutes and then we'll, we'll check on it. Let me set the timer here and I'm gonna turn it on. this off there we go nice clean carburetor kind of hard to tell but I mean definitely cleaner than what it was so here's all the other parts that come out of there, out of the carburetor. They just need a little cleaning. Here's that Venturi. For the most part, it's clean. This is that emulsion tube. The plug. Seat for the needle, needle, there's that pilot jet, there's the mixture screw, plug, and the hardware. There we go. All right, now we're going to work on getting this carburetor <clears throat> put back together. I just got a simple gasket kit here. So I got some scissors. We'll cut this open. So we got a new bowl gasket. That should go on there. Yep. Got a new flange gasket and we got some new seals there so so this emulsion tube gets one which obviously is not that one so it's gonna be this guy yep we'll blow this out make sure it's clean Got y'all. Whoops. There we go. And get him down in here. Like so. On this guy all the way down. And our gasket down there should line up. We'll just snug this. I 
like that. Okay, that's good. Let's get our seat back in there. Once she goes in here. Go in first, like that. Yep. Get our. Well, actually, let's get this jet back in there first. I'm gonna run this guy, little jet, back down in there. It'll start. because that was the wrong one. All right. Put our little jet back in there. And run it down. Just get it started carefully. So all you need is snug. Now we can put our seat in with our gasket. Like so. Get our floats. She goes like this with our pin, like so. Alrighty, like that. Reinstall our um, adjustment needle here. I'm gonna just run it around. I'm gonna just tighten up this air mixture needle till it stops. And I'm not gonna crank down on it, just till it gets snug. See, stop right there. So I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go two turns out. So I don't know if y'all can see, but that's a half. One, half, two. Two full turns out. That should get us in the ballpark of where we need to be. Get this guy cleaned up right here. Trying to get the rest of this gasket off this venturi here. Get a little help here. Got a little razor blade, just be careful doing this. I'm just gonna scrape this gasket off. All right. Keep those in there, like so. This guy goes back over here, like so. Something like this, so I'll have this upside down maybe.
There, it goes in there like that. There we go. All right. Now it's more like it. All right. Put that on there. We'll flip it over. Get some of these screws started. All right, I got this started. Let me get a screwdriver here. <clears throat> All right, I got the got the screw started. I'm gonna go ahead and snug them up. Going across pattern, so I'll get that one. This one, we'll go over here. I'll just snug these guys up. Plug here in the bottom. Okay. And then we'll put our drain plug in. And voila! One rebuilt carburetor. Why mountain? Away. So we've got this wash pump. Come. Try to catch what we can. This last bolt out. There we go. I'm just gonna set the alternator down. Then we'll get this cleaned off because we have a new one. Ooh. Be really careful if y'all are using razor blades, by the way, because they can get you. Brush this ceiling surface off and 
I'll get to making some gaskets. <laughs> All right, so I roughly bolted the uh, water neck back on. I don't have a gasket on there. I just have this bolted up because I want to dump some water in here and hopefully flush out this block. So let's see what happens here. I just have a jug of water. Mmm, y'all remember Willy Wonka's Chocolate River, huh? All right, I got our new uh, coolant bypass hose installed. Now we're gonna... That's great. All right, so I have our new hose here that comes out of the water pump into the elbow, and then our other hose here, which goes from the elbow to the radiator. Plus, I got new hose clamps for both, so we're going to get these installed. And I'm going to try to position the clamps where they uh they're easy to access if this thing ever has to be taken apart so we'll do that push this down on there i like to spray a little lubricant on here because so we got to fish this around so just a little bit of stuff on here will help get this all positioned into place This looks pretty happy right here. Yeah, so I'll get these tightened down. Oh, 
This one popped off. Oh, of course, because I had the thing going backwards. Stand by. There we go. There. There's one. Just need to reposition this where it'll go on the radiator. Which we may leave this one loose. I'm probably gonna leave this loose so when we slide the radiator on, we got some wiggle room here. But we'll go ahead and get the, the new belt belt on so we can get that out the way. And then we'll get this guy slid on. So I like to put these, this is a new belt. So I like to put these belts on where you can read the numbers, which on these tractors, I'm gonna flip this around where when you're looking from the rear of the tractor forward, you'll be able to see it through the fan shroud and the numbers won't be upside down. So we'll go on like this. This will slide around the fan. Slip this guy on there like that. Get this in the negative down. Spin this engine over by hand. So we're hitting right there. Clear there. Not clear on the bottom. All right, so I thought about what I'm gonna do with this fan shroud to get it to drop down some. I'm gonna end up notching the shroud. Uh, I'm gonna notch this hole and this hole up so it'll drop the the fan tried down just a little bit so we get a little bit better clearance because I don't know how well you could see, but this thing is not straight at all. But we're gonna make do with what we got and that should get this finished so we can button the front end up and start progressing to the rear of the track. in there to get our lower radiator hose back started here. Well, it's not hitting down low anymore so I think what we're gonna do is take this off and we'll just zip it here and there. All right so we got this thing cleaned up
All right, so what we're gonna try to do now is get this stuck um, bot drain out. Obviously it broke off, so we're gonna try to weld the nut to it, see if we can get it to come out. Attempt number three. coming out. There we go. Alright. All you gotta do is keep trying, people. All you gotta do is try. Never give up. It's gonna be hot, but... There we go. Drains out. Let that cool off. I'll put a plug in it and call it a day. We're going to work on the air breather and fix this bent tube. All right, so I have this marked where I'm going to cut it right here. So I'm going to get this cut and then we'll get the, the new piece slipped over it and then we'll weld it up. All right, so just so y'all know, I'm not a professional welder. Um, I kind of taught myself. I got this thing tacked in place, and I'm just gonna go ahead and pretty much just do a bunch of little tacks because this thing's so thin. And uh, yeah, we'll see how it comes out. Actually Sneak this in and slip her in there. See, look at that, perfect. Good as this gonna get. All right, old distributor's out. So these are the spark plugs we're putting in, Autolite 386s. Set the spark plug gap to 23 thousandths. Here's a spark plug gapper tool. We're just gonna look. They got 20,000, so we'll go one, two, three little notches past that. We'll see, we'll make sure the spark plug is in the center of the third notch, and we'll call that good. And then we'll just stick them in one by one. All right, all four are. Oh, stop it there. That different one. Will be two and three. This will be four. There. Here. There we go. Stick this guy. In. There we go. In the middle there. Like so. All 
right, so next we gotta make a wire to go from here to there, clean these up, and we'll be ready to move on. All right, I got my new wire for the coil that goes to the distributor. I like to put these little spirals in it. Just don't know why I just do. I think I saw it on somebody else's tractor one time. All right, hang this guy on here. Here, tightened up. All right, so you just need four or five zip ties for this, and we are gonna get these kind of semi organized here. Put one zip tie loose around all the wires, taking a zip tie. wire organizer. There we go. Here's our repaired air cleaner. As you can see, it's nice and straight now. So we're just gonna slide this guy down here and we're gonna loosely, you're just gonna tighten these up by hand get to installing the carburetor. All right, so we got a carburetor in our breather tube, breather back installed. Um, we're gonna hook up the temporary fuel system again, crank this thing up, see if our alternator's charging. Then we'll go ahead and fill this thing up with water, make sure we ain't got radiator leaks. Then we will start changing um, Fluids will change the transmission oil. We're gonna change the engine oil, filter, gear oil, and the transmission. Top off the final drives. We'll top off the hydraulic fluid and go from there. I right, just ran the 140 for a little bit to make sure the cooling system wasn't leaking. I uh, just put water in it. So just if it leaks, we're not wasting uh, antifreeze. Um, didn't notice any leaks. Uh, looks like the water was circulating. So I think we're good to go there. Um, charging system's working. So we are going to go ahead and start getting ready to change the fluids. But first, I'm going to pick up in this pigsty for a minute. Kind of get a little bit organized here and then we'll jump into change of fluids and button this thing up.
All right, now comes the fun part. We are gonna drain the transmission. What kind of surprises are we gonna find? Stuff we find. What's behind door number one? It's gonna be Willy Wonka's chocolate waterfall. Got there we go. That's one way to make a mess. Right now I'm gonna pour some diesel through here just to flush out any of that nasty crap. All right, so we're gonna fill the transmission back up with some fresh fluid with us. Plug back in. All right, so to top off the final drive fluid, we're gonna pull this plug out right here. I've already checked them. The oil or the gear oil looks good in there, so we're just gonna top them off. There's one plug on each side. So we'll get this guy out. Basically, I'm just gonna fill it up to the oil runs out of this hole. Fill it up. The fluid level just gets you a zip tie and stick it down in there. Oh yeah, we're close. We'll go ahead and call that good. All right, now we're going to go ahead and change on the, the engine oil. There we go. He's full. Perfect. Alright, All right, so here's our new sediment bowl. We'll make sure these fittings are snug and we'll get it popped on. Sediment bowl. Now 
Uh, let's go, go back on the track. guy right in here somewhere. We'll clamp soft and we'll be sorry, I'm not. All right, so the 140's finished. I got it loaded up on the trailer. I kind of thrashed last night to get it finished up. Got it all greased and serviced. <clears throat> Excuse me. And I'm fixing to pressure wash it off and make it look a little bit more presentable before I drop it off. But I think it came out good, runs good. Uh, I'll try to get a video of unloading it off the trailer when we get to the customer's house.
want to thank everyone for watching this video. Um, I know the outro wasn't the greatest. Uh, I got kind of focused on finishing up the tractor for the customer and getting it delivered back to them. So I kind of put the camera down for a minute and just worked and progressed through and got it knocked out. But I'm just going to go over some of the things we did to get it back to them. So when I picked up the tractor, it was not running. Uh, they just said it had a transmission issue, like it was stuck in gear or something. But uh, after I dug into it, we found that it had a bent push rod um, and the head gasket was leaking into one of the cylinders. So we went ahead and uh, decked or resurfaced the head uh, manually. You saw that in the first video and uh, got the cylinders cleaned up and got it back together. Put a new push rod in and uh, got it fired up just to see if it would run. And then uh, after that, we went ahead and dug back into it. It got a new ignition system. Um, we had to fix the radiator fan shroud because it was all bent and flopping around and held on with uh, safety wire. So I'll fix that where it was bolted back up properly. Um, went through the tractor and just serviced it. Uh, got all new fluids in it. Um, it's got new rear tires on it. We also had to fix on the air breather it was bent because the tractor had been flipped over at one point in its life that's why the fan trial was bent the radiators bent uh, luckily it's not leaking but it was bent um, so we we cut the tube on the air breather and got it put back with a new one or replacement uh, got it welded up and uh, yeah we put a new seat on it uh, had it gotten a new steering wheel steering wheel was bent we were also replaced the ammeter or amp gauge because it was all smashed to pieces and that's basically it uh a few little other things here and there but as you can see i got a few more projects in the shop so this will probably be the next one that we do a video on it uh me and my dad went to memphis and picked this up 14 hour round trip so we'll probably do a video on this but uh i appreciate all you guys support and watching these videos i know i'm just doing this for fun but if you want to keep up with me uh follow my instagram eric's garage uh or the facebook page eric's garage and i'll be posting some stuff up there and see y'all the next video